back to the Go Get the Spotlights. This is the third episode and I am privileged to be interviewing one of the few young men that I am very uh, exci excited about. Honestly, I believe that if we're talking about young people with a Midas touch, John Ofori would qualify as one of them. He's the president of Rethink Investment and he is a, a financial literacy advocate, a public speaker. Um, he's he's quite a number of things, okay? And I, I wouldn't want to take the wind out of the sail. I want John to tell you about John. So welcome to the Go Get the Spotlight, John. How are you today? I'm doing well, Echo. Thank you for okay. having me. Oh, you're welcome, my brother. You're welcome. And congratulations on an amazing, amazing event yesterday. Um, I, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I, I've seen how amazing these events turn out. And I know that from the resource person that you put on your program, they are going to have like such an empowering time. But before we get into all that, who is John? Tell us a bit about you and what you're passionate about. Okay. John Ofori is a young man who is a product of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Of course. Um, I am 24 years of age, actually. Wow. Um, I'm very passionate about my peers, young people. Um, way back on campus, I saw a lot of students struggling to pay their fees and they had it tough. And I thought, why not come up with ideas that will support my own colleagues to be able to pay their own fees whilst on campus? Okay. So I'm very passionate about the financial well-being of the young people in the country and outside the country. Wow. So that is Jennifer. That's that's amazing. I mean, uh, your your passion for financial literacy is is outstanding because you've been very consistent ever since I encountered you. And then looking at the people that you're impacting, but why why do you think this is necessary? Financial literacy. Why is it important? Echo, if you look at our side of this world or our side or part of the world. You could see the youth are the huge population of the mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And we look at how people graduate from the university and stay home for 10 good years without getting any job to do, any better thing to do. You see them still depending on their parents or their families or their siblings. So we believe that every young person can become financially independent when they are mm -hmm. self-disciplined. And okay. when they started very early. Mm. So we believe that if our leaders introduce financial literacy into our, our courses in the university, it's going to help bring down the high unemployment rates in mm. Africa. Oh, okay. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense because definitely Africa has the youngest population in the world. And unfortunately, we also have one of the highest unemployed youth. So this is a very good initiative and a course that you're on but how did it all start for you and okay so yeah rethink investment all started when i was on campus um i had the opportunity to attend one program mm -hmm. um, called the global money week okay. where i read about a bit of finance why people are finding it difficult to be self-disciplined mm -hmm. in this part of our world and I, rise, I realized that financial decision was one of the major keys mm. to that okay. problem. So I began to read around it, what financial literacy would do to the youth, how beneficial it will be to the economy of this country mm -hmm. and Africa itself. So I gathered some couple of friends way back on campus, Fred, Dairo, Tracy, and myself. So... I shared the ideas with them and they were like, oh, okay, this is a good idea. But since you are the originator of the idea, we can push you to do it. Mm. I had the opportunity to encounter one of my mentors, okay. that is Miss Ivatete of UMB Investment Holdings. I spoke to her about, mommy, this is what I want to do after my national service. So I was like, oh, okay, I believe in you, you can do it. You're, you're one of the great people that I'm looking up to grow up actually as a young person. Okay. So we started with some couple of programs. We registered Red Think actually in 2020, um, 2020 March. Then 
we had our first program during the lockdown. We had it online called the National Student Investment Conference, mm -hmm. titled Why Student Needs to Invest. We had speakers from EcoBank, Mr. Eric, uh, UMB Miss Ivatete, myself, and one Mr. Akwesi mm. from uh, Atlantic FM. Okay. Yes. Those are the people that we had on board and we're able to engage about 200 students online that day wow. to share our thoughts with them, why they need to invest. So basically, this is where everything started and we believe you are moving on. Oh, definitely you're moving on. I mean, if I look at where you where you started from, even in the thick of the pandemic and where you are now, I mean, that's impressive. Well done. But what are, what are some of your challenges? What challenges have you faced so far, you know, setting the Rethink investment up and bringing it to this point? We've come across a lot of challenges. Let me tell you the fact that in this part of our world, it's difficult to raise funds. Mm. And even with our student leaders, most of them want us to want Rethink to pay them before they organize a program on their own campuses. Wow. So we've encountered <laughs> a lot of challenges, raising funds, the student leaders, the student association bodies themselves. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of challenges with them. So mm -hmm. I believe we've been able to come, we've been able to overcome this challenge actually through making good networks and communication through the deans and the LSAC president of the various universities across Ghana. Mm. Oh, okay. So you work in partnership with the schools to pull these events off? Yes, please. But why, why, why are the student leaders asking for, for payments before they support? Why were they asking for payments in the, in the That is a question we've been asking them always. Um, <laughs> we have the opportunity to meet some of them, actually. And okay. I realize that some of them will tell you, oh, wait, we need something small to put it into our pockets. Really? Share it with the people. Yes. <laughs> young people yeah. young people wow young okay people. That, i mean that that's that's quite scary but i i guess uh it's it's good that you've overcome it do you sure. run this business full-time or you are, are you working somewhere else okay i used to be with gcb bank okay. limited as a data entry in other loans department cpc okay. but um i quit GCB this year to fully focus on rethink investments. Wow. That's it. I mean, did you have any objections from your family, your friends about quitting like an established organization like GCB to focus on rethink? Well, whilst I was quitting GCB, um, I had a talk with my elder sister okay. and my mom. Actually, you know, my dad won't be in favor of it. It was like, it's hard to get a job now. And God being so good to you, after your service, you just had a link to GCB and you're telling me you've quit. I was like, yeah. So I had a word with my other sister and my mom. I told them, mommy, see, I know that I'm not going to make money out of this thing, but I believe that this is my passion. This is my calling. If I do this very well, and even if I don't make anything out of it, I'll make a good name for myself and for the family. Mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and then what did your mom say? my mom said okay if that is what you want to do make sure you do it very well mm. make okay sure you do it very well and and what did your elder sister say she didn't try to uh talk you out of it for my elder sister she has always been in support of me she'll be like okay this is what you want to do from university so rather go for it and i have one person that i want to acknowledge most is anita free okay she has been very supportive in mm. this she's okay. she'll be like john you can do it you've got this you've got this even if we need money sometimes to print out our own graphic and stuff we'll call mm -hmm. anita she'll send us okay john use this to do that use this to do that and my brother richmond also has been very supportive these people around me have been very very supportive wow would you consider yourself as lucky having supportive people around you like that I won't consider myself as lucky, but okay. I'll consider telling people that it's my season. 
Okay. Because I believe <laughs> that there is time and season for everything. For everything. There are people who okay. have been doing this for a very long time and they don't even get partnership from the banks itself. Yeah. We just walk into the scene and somebody came on board. Oh, you are doing this. We want to partner you to do this. Mm. And people, you know, from nowhere start calling. We want to support you with this. We want to do this for you. Mm. And I believe God has pushed us to this point. And it's our season, actually. Okay, great. Wonderful. I mean, I'm always inspired when I look at you and the things you're doing. And like I always tell you, I'm always looking for opportunity where we can also contribute and through this go get a spotlight i'm hoping that you also get to reach other places that you may not have reached yet and sure. if you look for, if you look at all that is happening in in this country in africa and in other parts of the world if you have to advise the youth what would you tell them one of my greatest advice to my peers out there the people coming after is the next generation is that you need to take financial literacy very seriously. Mm. Um, we believe that if our leaders up there are taking our financial sector very seriously, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be in this mess as at now? Mm -hmm. Yes, because I'm saying this because if you look from Kwame Nkrumah's era, Rollins' era to Kufo's era, mm -hmm. you could see that we had we're one of the best countries to run our own finances without going to the imf mm -hmm. without going for loans but because of undecisive mm. things among our leaders up there we've not been able to manage our finances very well so my advice out there to young people is that they should be very passionate about their finances mm -hmm. they should have a budget and they should stick to it okay Wonderful. Tell us the vision of Rethink, because I know for you to put in such commitment, leaving a full-time confirmed job to focus on this full-time, rallying the support of your mom, your sister, and all that, share with us the vision you have for this dream. Okay. So the vision of Rethink is to serve as the bedrock for tertiary student investment bank in ghana and beyond mm. we want to run a bank where it's solely going to be for students mm. where students can come in get some startups raise their own funds through their investments and we want to have one of the biggest funds in africa mm. so you want to have a bank with yes. primary focus on students yes. you want to have a fund that supports students initiative as well sure Okay, why, why are you so passionate about students? I mean, you told us that they started from school and you realized that, yes, the students, if they had good financial um, literacy and all that, they'll be able to make very good decisions and all that. But why is it that the vision of Rethink is still focused on students? Okay, Echo, the reason why we are focused on students is that um, we believe that the next generation is not far off. Okay. The next generation is in the SHS, is in mm -hmm. the university. If we are able to educate these people well, they will get up there as leaders mm -hmm. and make good decisions for mm -hmm. the next people coming. Okay. So our focus is on the next generation, the next oh, set wow. of leaders. Okay. Let me share this with you. I hope you've seen this loops. Yeah. Division <laughs> among the leaders now. Yeah. I believe if they had good decision making leaders out there mm -hmm. they only been dividing loops as at now while students need them the most true so that is what we think will help mm -hmm. the country and africa as a whole that's that's wonderful i mean tell me a bit about the name rethink i mean are, are we have we finished thinking and we need to rethink like how did you come about the name and what's the story behind it okay. rethink so um when i spoke to my colleagues they proposed names somewhere <laughs> like oh let's name it oj the short form okay. was before you join company okay. limited then people <laughs> like oh OJ okay yeah. let's do it and um, the kenyst hub okay i remember someone telling me i should use my mom's name because they are always saying i mentioned my mom's name yeah, always yeah. talking to my mom i was like okay oh, so actually, I sat down one day, I was going through Facebook, 
and I saw a post from one man. Mm -hmm. He said, if the youth can really think about their generation or about their future, mm -hmm. they'll be good people and better people to run the affairs of Africa very well. Mm -hmm. So okay. I paint this man, I was asking himself, why do you think this quote is good for the next generation? I was like, see, the young people have this mindset that after school, I want to enter into politics, I want to become a politician, do that, and boom, we make money. Yeah. All that set of the youth also think we can browse online and make money. Yeah. All that set of the youth also think, I need it very quick. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the streets, make it on the streets, and I'm gone. That's it. That is why we've seen a lot of crimes on the rise now. Happening. Yes. So I spoke to them and I was like, I like the name Red Thing. And he asked me, why do I like the name Red Thing? I was like, sir, this sounds like a call mm -hmm. or alarm to the next generation. Mm. So I came back to my people. I was like, okay, let's name it Red Thing Investment Africa Group of Companies. And somebody was like, oh, we can't run a group of companies. I was like, yeah, we can't run it. But in the future, we will change the name to Rethink Africa, Rethink Investment African Group of Companies. Mm, mm, mm. So this is how we came by the name Rethink. So already from the very beginning, you are thinking of a group of companies. Wow. <laughs> so how many, how many of these initiatives under the group have you implemented so far? Now, we've been able to initiate the National Student Investment Conference, which we are okay. doing across the okay. tertiary universities now. We are coming up with the tertiary investment challenge okay. for the tertiary student to be able to have access to the stock market. Mm. We believe that if students look at that aspect too, they'll create jobs for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at rolling out the nas national investment quiz for the SHS students. Mm -hmm coming mm -hmm. this year and wow. we want to roll out the national investment awards for the corporate world as well <laughs> so, and rethink africa investment conference so uh, okay. all this i are in the pipeline that the we pipeline. are trying to bring them out oh okay okay well recently the, the president was advocating for young people to not only focus on getting jobs but to create their own businesses do you support this uh call and what, what do you think the potential challenges of something like this uh, is going to be? Um, of course, I'll say I support this call to extend. Okay. To an extent, actually. Um, when our leaders are telling us that the youth coming out of the university should create jobs for themselves and employ their colleagues, mm -hmm. have they put in the structures in place mm -hmm. to help these young ones to pass through smoothly, to be able to assess this because see, when I used to work with GCB, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people come for loans, right? We have this uh, one DF loans that we give to the SMEs, mm -hmm. and if you look at the companies coming in, they are companies that are well structured. Mm -hmm. They are well known before they come for loans. No startups comes to GCB Bank for loan mm -hmm. that one DF loan, and I was shocked. And I asked my boss, why is that young startups don't come for say? Even if we are coming for the loan, mm -hmm. the kind of requirements they give you, you no young to, person from the yeah. university will be able to assess that loan. Mm. So I want to put this question to our leaders. They are saying we should create jobs. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them start this youth startup something. They've you rolled start. it out. Yeah, yeah, youth start. They've rolled it out. And I want to ask them, are they putting structures in place for the next people coming out of the universities? to start mm. something with their own life. Mm -hmm. I know this you start is the loans that you are giving to the people. Yeah. And I spoke to a colleague yesterday. This colleague used to do this peanut stuff. The lady went to, I won't mention organization, actually, uh -huh. but one of these youth organizations for the nation. Okay. He went there, he went to solicit for fun, and there was one person over there told you that he wants to buy that idea of really yes because mm. when the girl shared the idea with the person the person like he wants to buy the idea of so when the person came to i said never sell this idea to them because they've seen the potential of that idea 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as I speak to you now, Echo, they frustrated the lady. When the lady goes to register the company, they'll tell her this name is picked. She'll do this, she'll do this. So I was talking to her yesterday. She should just hold on. Mm -hmm. We are going to get this company registered for her. We are going to help her raise her own funds to start this thing. And I have a plan with her that she, at the end of every month, she's depositing 50 CDs into the UMB balance fund. Mm -hmm. And I've given her just two years. Okay. To get something to start her own company. Is she a student she as well? Or oh, she's yes. done with school? She's a she's student. Done with school. Oh, she's, she's done, done with school. school. Oh, okay. Yeah, but is she doing school. this full time? She's doing this full time because she doesn't have a job now. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And she hasn't gotten any kind of support? Nope. But, okay, all right. I'm sure we can discuss this uh, because, uh, like you said, they, they, they aren't enough structures to support students. But I think that there are quite a number of initiatives that the schools themselves are bringing. You know, I know some schools have entrepreneurship development hubs and they are trying to set up innovation hubs and all those days. And there are quite a number of things happening, you know, in the startup ecosystem. But from your perspective, as a student entrepreneur and someone that finished school, focused, I mean, got a job, and then, you know, sacrificed that job to run your own business, do you think that we have enough initiatives in place, both by government and private sector, to support entrepreneurship development and particularly student entrepreneurship development? Um, I'll tackle this question in two aspects. Okay. I'll say in the government sector, they failed woefully. Okay. Yes. But with the private sector, they've put in some structures in place for young people to apply for funds mm -hmm. to be able to start their own company. Mm -hmm. And okay. other people are also supporting the youth in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, because I had colleagues that had applied for this total and other funds mm -hmm. and i tell mm -hmm. you they've made it big okay and one problem i also have with our generation is that we don't read true we don't read you go to the internet there are a lot of opportunities there even the government sectors their websites if you go there and you take some pieces out there and read them very well when you're drafting a proposal you're applying for this funds you know what to put in there. Mm -hmm. Most people mm -hmm. don't know what to put into their proposals to gain this funds from the company. So I mm. believe, as for the government sector, they failed woefully, but the private sectors that are into this, they are doing much better wow. for Africa. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna get into politics now, but I, I believe that we are all trying our best, you know, to, to make the future, um, well, not just bearable, but better than it is now. Uh, what what would you want your legacy to be? I mean, when your name, John Ofori, is mentioned, let's say the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, what would you want people to know and say about you? What do you want your legacy to be? <laughs> that is a big question to ask a call. Um, anywhere that my name should be mentioned, people should say this young man has put in an end to poverty among mm. the youths. Mm. Mm. Okay. And I'm sure that's the vision. That's the dream. That's the drive. Okay. That's sure. great. If you have to advise your younger self or advise young people all over the world, what would your advice be? My advice to my colleagues out there, my brothers and sisters is that this thing that we call entrepreneurship, eh, if you are not consistent in this game, you will lose. Okay. I remember the PRO to Magdan. Mm -hmm. I walked to his office and I spoke to him that, oh, this is my initiative. This is what I want to do. Just like, John, nobody will help you now. But if wow. you are consistent with what you do, they will come chasing you with money. Mm. So any young person out there needs to be consistent. Mm. That is a game changer. And you okay. need to be passionate about what you do. Okay. Make sure you read around what you do very well. Master your craft mm. so that when people call on you anytime, you can deliver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is my advice to the youth. Okay. 
consistency, master your craft, and ensure that whatever you're doing, you're putting focus, energy, and passion into it. This has been the third episode of the Go Get the Spotlight, and I've been privileged to be interviewing this amazing 24-year-old who is going to take Africa and the rest of the world by storm with his passion to ensure that every individual is financially literate to be able to make smart financial decisions and also resulting in the better management of economies around the world. Thank you so much, John. Uh, it's been an insightful time. And I look forward to engaging with you further going forward. All the best with your initiatives. And we're going to talk Thank again you. soon. All right. All Thank the best, my brother. Very much. Have a wonderful Thank you. day. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Bye.